2025 is the year of AI agents. In this video, we're going to whet the appetite for AI agents and explore what it would look like to build your first AI agent. And we'll do that by first defining what an AI agent is, according to a September 2024 paper by Google. Let's take a look at the paper. This paper, written by Julia Wiesinger, Patrick Marlowe, and Vladimir Buskovich, um, continues to explain what agents are through a really useful diagram of agent architecture. So this here is ultimately agentic architecture. You have a user that submits a query, and an agent here is represented as a runtime. A runtime that has an orchestration layer, we'll talk about what that is in a second, that has a large language model or multiple large language models, and tools. And tools can be extensions, functions, or vector stores. So you've got an orchestration layer, a, lang a language model or more, and a set of tools. This can be extensions, functions, or vector databases, or databases or data sources in general. Okay, and so an agent is a runtime that composes these three. Specifically, an agent has an orchestration layer that's, that decides, that observes an environment and comes up with thoughts. I should do this, I should do that. The language model and its reasoning framework is responsible for coming up with these thoughts. So the orchestration layer liaises between the model and then also chooses tools to use, executes agency over what tool to use. Now with this representation of an agent, we can model an agentic workflow pretty close to this using Datastax Langflow with really no effort. To do that, let's take a look at how we might model this in Datastax Langflow. So if we come over to Datastax Langflow, this is a fresh instance of Langflow. We're going to create a new flow and we're going to choose the simple agent template. So we'll do this and we have a little readme here, which explains how we can use this tool. So um, we run an agent with a URL and a calculator as tools available for its use. The agent decides which tool to use to solve a problem, um, the, this, the agent being the framework we discussed. To get started, we just add an OpenAI API key and we open the playground and chat with the agent. Seems simple enough. So these are our tools. We have a URL tool, a calculator tool, and a chat input. And here we'll just add our API key for OpenAPI. And we should be good. So I'm going to head to the playground. And since we have a calculator and a URL tool, a URL can just go browse the web for any answer, we could do something that requires both browsing the web for authoritative data and using the calculator tool. Uh, maybe a contrived example, but just to get our feet wet and build our first agent, we could say something like, let's calculate the square of the current population of uh, Germany, right? Let's just try that. So what is the square? square of the current population of Germany. And so when we send this flow, when we start this flow, what's going to happen is it's going to start working as an agent. So we have our input here that was computed in zero seconds. It's going to go browse the internet to worldometers to get the current population for 2025 um, from Germany. And it's going to use the calculator. And notice there's a little mistake here because this is a string, but it will still try again and this time succeed. And so we see that the squared population is computed. Now, if we close this little inspector, we can look at the actual text output, which is the current population of Germany is 84,303,152. Um, and the square of this is that, which is kind of tremendous that it just did that as an agent, chose the tool to use, especially since LLMs have a reputation with math. But maybe we can do a little bit better because you know population squaring isn't something useful. How about calculating currency based on the current exchange rate. Again, we need a calculator and we need real-time data because the exchange rates change every day. So let's try that. Um, calculate 200 or 326 US dollars as, um, let's do Indian rupees, Indian rupees, rupees, based on the current exchange rate, right? And this is like a true agentic use case that I think is very common to a lot of applications. So same thing, it's going to get our input and look, it's going to figure out which tools to use. So it's, it fetched the exchange rate, um, it got the latest for USD, and it's going to now calculate. Boom, look at that, 326 times the exchange rate gives us 27,964.28 rupees. It's going to now synthesize text. Um, and we can collapse this because we anticipate a nice text result. And we'll get back a very decent um, text textual response. And there, so we see the current exchange rate for USD to INR is approximately 85.78. Therefore, converting 326 USD to Indian rupees gives us um, 27,964.28 Indian rupees. There's some weird formatting happening here, but in general, it works. We built an agent that uses tools to get real-time data. An agent that, let's go back to that paper, the, the agent that 
um, orchestrate, this is our agent here. It orchestrates the flow between the model and the tools, the tools being the calculator and the URL and the model, of course, being GPT-4 or mini as we, as we saw. So we created our first agent. There's so much more to this, right? There's, there's the chain of thought um, frameworks that we can use. There's things we can tweak. There's different types of tools. There's extensions, there's data stores. There's, um, there's ways we can customize the knowledge of the agent for in-time inference or in-time vector-based inference or even fine-tuning. There's so much we can do, but for now, to scratch the surface, this is what it takes to start, to dip your toes into the water of AI agents and we'll continue to create content that deepens this working knowledge. Thanks for sticking around and we'll catch you in the next one.